Hi, everybody. We're here with another Justice Democrat, primary and corporate Democrats. He's in uh, Texas's 10th congressional district. His name is Ryan Stone. Ryan, how are you? I'm doing really well. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. Now, here's a, just a little bit. Uh, your background is that you're an accountant for a small business and you're a city council member in Manor, Texas right now. And you uh, were an accountant at a hospital and you saw spending excesses when you worked there. So is that what kind of made you want to run or tell us what made you want to run? Well, it was it was really the um, sort of all these things that came together. Like when when I was uh, in my early 20s, I developed a really severe case of arthritis, like debilitating. And this was before the ACA, before Obamacare came along. And so I spent years uh, in pain because it was misdiagnosed. I didn't have enough money to go to doctors. And when ACA finally passed, I was able to become mobile and happy and healthy again. Uh, but recently we had, you know, this whole Obamacare repeal, you know, Trump voted in those sorts of things. So there's the very, very real danger that I could be disabled uh, if these sorts of things pass, which I wouldn't allow that to happen. I would have to move away. But it's a very real danger for me personally. So working as an accountant in a hospital sort of sped that long. It was like, oh, I could see other people in the same situation. Oh, and and so what made you uh, particularly want to run as a justice Democrat? All right. So this area of Texas is I mean, nobody knows what Texas 10 is. Nobody really knows that there's this district between Austin and Houston with this rural area. And I wanted there to be a national voice to this campaign in this area. I wanted it to be not just us fighting here in this one isolated spot in Texas. I wanted everyone nationally to know what was happening and for us to be able to build that momentum because our incumbent here is worth over $100 million. Like we need some real help in order to change leadership here. And the and the, the who's the incumbent? Uh, it's Michael McCall. He's the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee. So he's a Republican. He is. And he's worth $100 million. So you know he's in touch with the people and their problems. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. So let me just go down. Let me just run down a couple of things. Uh, is there another Democrat running in this primary? Or are you the only one? Uh, I think uh, the the woman who ran in the past three elections, Tawana Katie, and she announced that she's going to run. And I I think that's it for the moment. We okay. only have me and, and her. And I'm the only one out actually out there campaigning right now. Uh, and I think it's really important to take advantage of this momentum, this crazy political atmosphere we have. So I've been going at it pretty hard. So you're the the first order of business of a justice Democrat is that you don't take corporate PAC money, correct? Correct. So just uh, just individual donations, correct? That's right. OK, so that's a big deal, because as I've said over and over, we need to have an authentic conversation, right? So even when you go see Democrats and they pretend to not understand an issue like single payer, like Debbie Wasserman Schultz does, or like uh, we saw Dianne Feinstein do, they pretend to not understand the issue, which is that Upton Sinclair quote, it's hard to get a person to understand an issue when his paycheck de uh, depends on him not understanding it. And so now if we get that corporate money out, we can then have an authentic conversation. I don't mind somebody having a different idea about policy. I just want somebody to have an honest authentic conversation so first order of business you're forgetting no corporate money you don't take corporate pack money or corporate money right okay so what how about single payer you for single payer totally completely that is i'm running with brand new congress and that is number one on the list is medicare for all okay fantastic how about uh are you for college tuition free yes yes okay that's also how about a living wage 15 dollar minimum Yes, fifteen dollar minimum is also a BNC platform too. Okay, and how about ending the war? Now this is where it gets tricky for some people. It's the foreign policy, right? Now, are you for ending the wars and uh, investing that money back here, or do you think we should overthrow Assad? No, I'm completely for ending the wars. I think that our military should be mostly humanitarian in nature. We should definitely have a strong defense, but we need to be that beacon on a hill again, to where when people think about the American military, they don't think about getting bombed. They don't think about hatred, they think about the good things that we do. So I am I am for ending that war. 
So now, uh, and you're a real person, which is what, when I say you're a real person, it's like you have firsthand knowledge of problems. Uh, A, you had health problems that you couldn't get addressed because of our sad state of healthcare in America and that people uh, with pre-existing conditions and not a lot of money got locked out of healthcare. You understand that problem, right? So you're also, you worked as a, you worked as a waiter, you worked as a teacher. So how would those jobs inform uh, how you legislate? Well, I've worked in all these areas that I mean, tons of other people have experience in. I mean, when you when you think about uh, you know poverty rates and how people come up, especially in the state of Texas and especially in this district, uh, that it, that gives me sort of this parallel experience with all of my neighbors, people who have done these jobs. When I go up to them and tell them, you know, I was a waiter, they say, yeah, you know, so many of so many of us were, or teachers, or accountants, um, and I've been a jack of all trades in in all of these areas, but I've it's also given me this perspective across all boards of not only what their needs are, but what happens in the system and how they're they're kept down, how they're sort of uh, how how the system keeps them in this in this loop or in this cycle of poverty or keeps them confused or uh, not really as mobile as they could be. So no, I'd never hear politicians uh, mention the word poverty uh you know cornell west uh, uh, tried to get barack obama to address poverty in america uh, during the recovery he wouldn't do it um so i just heard you say so people don't realize that the income disparity in america is a big deal and it shows you that our system is failing right the system of what i consider to be trickle down economics neoliberalism or corporatism and the takeover of our government by the people who are owned by corporations right which is why we don't have free college which is why we have endless war which is why we don't have single payer which is why we pay twice as much for our medicine than canada does even if not more so it's because our government is a hundred percent corrupted by corporate cash and people do not realize that right so now your uh your district is comprised of mostly middle class working families and what do you now are they concerned about russia or what would you say their biggest concerns are uh their concerns are uh they're they're big on education uh, because Texas education is is lackluster, um, they they are big on immigration. Immigration is a hot button issue uh, for Texas because of the border, and uh, really they're they're big on their their choice and mobility issues. You know, do do you have to decide between you know having a job and getting to go on vacation, or between having health care or sending you know your children to school? Those sorts of things. Is it so? They they really want they see the same problems in the system. It's just they're they're a little bit less affected in terms of you know they're not absolutely destitute, but they they still want to upwardly move. They still want to have choices in their life, and they they don't want to be kept down by that corporate greed by those uh, those big money interests. So now, what would you what would be your emphasis? Now you win the if you win the Democratic primary, do you, what first, first of all, what is the split of registered Democrats and Republicans in your district? Do you know what that number is, or can you give me a general idea? I'm I'm not sure what that what that split is really. I do know that in average, in the past three elections, there's been a, between a thirty five thousand and fifty thousand voter gap uh, between those, but uh, we we don't really know like the hard numbers on those yet. So, uh, so if you can, if you can get 30,000 people to kind of change their mind and, you know, Donald Trump now, uh, how, so the, 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 the Republican who you're going to, if you win the primary, will be running it. He's uh, in bed with Trump. It seems like, right. Uh, it, is it going to be hard to stick him to Trump? Uh, it's actually not because, uh, he, he did try to come out against Trump at one point last year. Uh, last October, whenever the audio leak came out, he made a post saying, I have daughters, I can't stand by uh, a president who says these things, or, or a candidate. And, and man, the Tea Party ate him alive. They just, they were like, he is a rhino, he is, he is not for Trump. And he took that to heart, and so now he is very much uh, just, I mean, kissing up to Trump. Uh, ever, all he can because he doesn't want to make his base angry. So it's really not hard to stick those things on him because he actually came out. I think it was an RNC convention and said uh, our next president should be Donald Trump. So if you want, you know, a campaign ad, there you go. So I mean, he is the most unpopular uh, president at this point in history. So 
Uh, it should, should help you. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that helps you. Hopefully, you win the primary, and hopefully, I mean, this is what we need. We need people like you who don't take corporate money, who understand what the problems are, not only as an idea, but firsthand, that you know what the problems people are having are. So uh, we wish you all, all the best. When you get in Congress, what, what are you going to focus on legislatively? Uh, well, first of all, it's going to be health care, because the sooner we get that solved, I mean, we have... We, we have all of these problems, but none of them really matter if people aren't healthy. So we, we want to get people to that place to where that that is simplified and they can wake up in the morning not having to worry about that. So healthcare would be would be number one. We also want to address uh, renewable energy and environmental concerns. Uh, BNC's platform is 100% renewable energy for the nation within 10 years. Uh, which I think is an ambitious but absolutely like not unattainable goal. We can definitely do that. Uh, and Texas is the leader in renewable energy production in the United States right now, so we can definitely what? do that here. I did not uh, know that. So that's that's big news. Uh, Texas leads the nation in renewable energy production. It does, and everyone's surprised every time they hear it. That is surprising. That's uh, wow. That's by because people don't realize what has happened mo- very recently. Renewable energy, solar, wind, it's now cheaper to produce per megawatt than coal, right? So that's a big deal. So that's what's going to really spur, uh, and we need to get in front of that. We don't want to let China get out in front, and and, and what I mean get in front of that mean like we want to be the leader in that industry. We want to be producing renewable infrastructure and being able to export that to people. That's what the United States should be doing, but right now they're kind of ceding it to the other countries. So uh, it's good to hear that that's the second big thing on your agenda. You go from healthcare to renewable energy, and would that be it? Uh, no, third for me is actually corruption, uh, because I mean, obviously from the the administration, but uh, even here in Maynard, we had uh, a mayor who was investigated by the FBI for being involved in a Russian real estate scam. Like a Russian actually came in and tried to uh, to buy out city officials. So that you know, the national story actually hits close to home here because the city council seat that I hold right now, he actually held a few years ago before all that happened. So. Uh, those things are are rampant in our system, and we have them on the state level, too, in the state house as well. And it's not just Republicans, it's Democrats. So we have an issue with the state Democrat as well, uh, going up on 13 charges of corruption. Uh, and so these these things are all over the place, and they do two things. They don't let us get things done because we have representatives and council members and president wrapped up in trial proceedings, and then they spend the taxpayer money. So not only do we not get things done, but we pay money to have to deal with people's corruption. So, And so, I mean, it's an uphill battle, right? There's a Republican incumbent. Uh, you have a populist message. Uh, so they're going to have all the money, corporate money behind them trying to smear you and squash you. So get ready for that. Uh, but, you know, best of luck. We, we love to hear people with this kind of platform getting involved in, in politics. Right. So you got to you got to have a strong chin. Right. You can't have a glass jaw mm-hmm. be in politics. So get ready because they're going to start smearing you just so you know that's coming. But uh, congratulations for you for for having the spine to do this. Ryan Stone, where can people find out more about you if they want to help out your campaign? OK, so they can go to two websites. One is brandnewcongress.org. And one is my website, uh, stone2018.com. That's S-T-O-N-E 2018.com. Uh, in both places, you can uh, find the platform. They can see all the issues, uh, plus many more that we didn't discuss there, such as private prisons uh, and uh, investment in communities and infrastructure, things like that. And uh, get a comprehensive list of all the candidates that are running with brand new Congress as well, not just here in Texas 10, but across the nation. Yes, well, it's good to hear. Uh, yeah, there's so many important topics, private prisons. You know, we just found out, in Los Angeles, that it costs seventy thousand dollars per year per inmate. <laughs> so it's officially more money than to call, send someone to Harvard. Anyway, that's great that you're on that. This is what we need, right? So the corporations have taken over our country since 1980 for sure, and uh, now we uh, because we know because of the Cambridge study that regular voters have absolutely no influence over policy. So what we need to do is get people like Ryan Stone elected so we can turn the power back to the people because he's not going to take that corporate money. Who's he going to be uh, beholden to? You, the donor who gives small individual donations. That's what we need to get back to in the United States. Ryan, I thank you so much for taking time. Any last words you want to say to our listeners? Uh this is the golden moment. Like, this is the moment of our generation. 
if you want to make a difference, do it now, whether it's supporting me or supporting any other candidate. These are the times you'll remember in 20, 30 years looking back whenever your kids ask, what were you dur doing during that time? Uh, so I would say give everything you have, step into this fight because you're going to be proud of it later. We're definitely going to make a difference. So thank you for having me on the show. All right. Brand new Congress, Justice Democrat Ryan Stone running in Texas, 10th District, Texas, the nation leading the nation in renewable energy production. That's a, that's the big get out of this interview right here. All right. Hey, Ryan, thank you so much for taking time and uh, letting everybody know about your progressive journey. And we'll hopefully we'll check in with you after the primary and it could give you a nice congratulations. All right, thanks for having me. The next live Jimmy Dore show is June 19th in Burbank, California, and July 15th in San Francisco at the Great Star Theater. For all links for all tickets to those shows and our full schedule right there, there's a link to JimmyDoreComedy.com. We'll see you at those live shows.